Well, guys, if you want to learn how to make a quick and delicious treat, keep watching Monkey Bread. Well, guys, we're at a special treat today. Today I'm at the beautiful Holland Ranch. Look at this beautiful river and the mountains here and the scenery. The Holland Ranch sits on an old ghost town called Jelm, J-E-L-M, Wyoming. And it was the home of many pioneers and my friend Rod Holland's ancestors on this ranch. And now we're going to cook the old way as was done on this ranch over a hundred years ago. And what could be more perfect than my son-in-law, Chris Coates? Hi everyone, I'm Chris Coates and I'm excited to be here. Chris is married to my youngest daughter, Kate. And Chris and I have been working together and we've bonded quite well over the years around cooking. So today we're going to cook monkey bread. This is one of Chris's specialties. Monkey bread was made by pioneers, or so we think. But it's certainly made here on the ranch today. And why do they call it monkey bread, by the way? It's because it tears apart, Brooks. When you put it together and it makes all the gooey goodness, you tear it apart and it kind of looks like monkey fists. Monkey fist. Mm -hmm. Like that, like well, that. Yep. Monkey. So I've got some coals in the chimney here. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat these all up. And once they're heated up and nice and white, we're going to transfer them over to the Dutch oven to actually bake the, the monkey bread. Okay. So we're going to wait till these get white hot, and then we're going to take the next step. Exactly. So Chris, what happens now? We've got the charcoal cooking away here, and now we've got, I see that you've lined the Dutch oven here with tin foil. So we line the, the Dutch oven with the tin foil because you cook a lot of different things in the Dutch ovens, and when you're camping, it's especially hard to keep the sweet from the savory. It's sweet and it. savory. Savory, yep. Sweet and savory, not together. Not together, yeah. Okay. We want to keep them separate. We don't want this to taste like a steak, and we don't want our steak to taste like this. This was really maybe... Could we say the pioneer's predecessor of crockpot? Crockpot, exactly yeah. What it is. So it's this just is like the old crockpot. Crock pot. They yeah. used to bury these underneath the fire, go out and work all day, and come back, and they'd have a full meal. Now with this tin foil, the key part is it needs to stay below the rim because if you let it go over the rim, it won't have the right seal when you're trying to bake with the Dutch oven. We have a little bit of butter in here. We're also going to put some almonds on top on top as well. Put Are those Jordan almonds? These are going to be Jordan almonds. Yes. Jordan, from the yep. land of Jordan. Exactly. And so the reason you're putting these almonds on the bottom is that once this cake is done, we're going to flip it over, kind of like a pineapple upside down cake. One of the things when you make this at home monkey bread, you'll make caramel on your own, but we're camping and we don't really want to make a bunch of caramel and stuff like that, so we bought some really fancy caramel. And you're just going to put a little bit on top there because it's all going to drip down anyway. So you're starting with the butter, the walnut, and the caramel, and then we're going to put the bread part of the monkey bread on top of that. Okay. For this deal, I'm going to use these Pillsbury Grands. A lot of times when you're at home, you use homemade bread, but when you're out and about and you're camping, it's a lot easier to use this kind of stuff. So Mama Mabel's boy usually does everything from scratch, but when you're camping, you get kind of a little pass You on could that. fudge on that a little bit when yeah. you Yeah, but in my kitchen, you, you I would I would never even bring these into your home. No, you would, I would bring never bring them into the house. Absolutely. No, absolutely. If you brought prepared food into my house, no. That, I'm done. You're that's done? It. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And I understand okay. those rules, so those are rules we live by. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut these into fours. We want four per biscuit. First, you're going to ball them up individually. So monkey balls. Monkey balls, basically. Yeah. So this bag right here is your standard Ziploc bag, and it has a little bit of sugar and a little bit of brown sugar, a 50-50 mix. You're going to put your monkey balls in there, put them in the bag, and you coat it with the mixture. And once the mixture is all coated, you just drop them into the pan. But you're just going to rinse and repeat this process all the way until the entire thing is full. So how many of these little monkey fist balls do we put in there, Chris? Well, it's, it's two eight packs of the, of the uh, you're making me nervous with that there. Oh, sorry. It's a little, yeah. as a father-in-law with a knife, I don't know about all that. Let's, let's, <laughs> so you're going to put about 60 plus, give or take. Each There's going to be eight biscuits, and you're going to get four out of each biscuit, and you're going to do two packs of biscuits. So four times eight is? I think that it's 36. Four times eight, 36. 32, isn't it? I don't know. I'm not, I, uh, 32. I, I do math for a living, but not 32. Not when I'm okay. We have All right, son of law, I see you got the, the monkey um, pieces in there, the monkey balls. So now that this is all ready, we need to take our coals, which have been flipped over into the chimney and 
wring them out to use them to cook. So the way that it works with a Dutch oven is you have to have a good tongs. There's no way to do this without tongs. You can't tongs. do it with your hands. I've made yeah. that mistake and I may make it before this clip's over. We'll but that, see. Does that hurt? It's hot. It's yeah, hot. It's absolutely hot. The it's trick hot. here when you're baking with a Dutch oven is that you want to put more coals on top and just a couple coals on the bottom. So going back to my grade school, a second grade physics class, the heat rises up. So if you put too many coals on the bottom, it'll burn them. The trick on the Dutch ovens is to make the actual pan hot and make it so it's a more even heat. You see that I've spread out here about five of these coals on the bottom here. So I'm gonna take the, the Dutch oven and I'm gonna put it on top of okay. those coals. We're then gonna take the lid, but it's gotta be snug. The key is that you want to have a nice seal because that's how this is gonna bake. And this I notice is a 12 inch Dutch. This is a 12 inch Dutch. You can do this with a 10 inch Dutch, but I like to do it with a 12 inch Dutch just to give more room for the bread to rise. That's brilliant, young man. Yep. That's some brilliant. Of these, some of each coal, each one of these coals, is worth about 25 degrees. Now they take that from about sea level, but you figure 25 degrees of coal. So if we want to cook this at 350, how many coals do we need, Bubba? 14 coals on there. So. Now I can start to smell something. Is that a good sign? Yep, it means it's, we're it's, doing something right. It, it's a very happy smell, Chris. It is. So, but I guess the thing I'm learning from you, son, is that you just can't go monkey bananas with this stuff because the average person would probably cover up the bottom cover up the top, walk away for a cocktail, come back and have nothing but burnt monkey balls. And, and I can't imagine anything worse than burnt monkey balls. No, me neither. <laughs> How long are we gonna wait now, Christopher? It's about 20 minutes to bake these. All right. It's been about 20 minutes and you can see all these coals are pretty much burnt out. So we've gotten to the end of the road with this. So we're gonna see how well we've done. Oh, look at that. My. Look at that. Look at that. We have a little bit of extra caramel that we're going to use that we left over on purpose. Chris, these are looking good. Yep, now's the moment of truth. We've baked them. We've done everything we need to do. We flipped the monkey. Yep. We flipped the monkey. Flip the I'm nervous. Things. I'm nervous. I'm nervous as oh, well. No. So far, that looks good. Ah. Look at that. Oh! Monkey bread. Whoa! It looks like we did it right. Yeah. Oh. Man. Hey kid, monkey bread is ready. Come on yeah. up here, try some monkey bread. Have a bite, tell us what you think. Well, Chris, that's it for today. This has been an experience. Look at this. I mean, I'm major impressed. The kids love it. We're camping heroes. Well, maybe you're the camping hero here. It came out perfect. Look how fluffy that is. Mm. Mm. Yum. Yum. Mm. Here you go, Bubsy. Thank you. This was great. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Chris, I consider myself to be one of the great ones when it comes to cooking. But son, I just can't tell you how impressive this is. Well, I learned from the best, Bubba, so. Like we always say in Mama Mabel's, boy, bye-bye and yum-yum. Yum-yum. A clean camp is a happy camp. <laughs> bon appetite, partner. <laughs>